And hello everyone, welcome back. We're going to continue our discussion on turbulence modeling. And in the last video, we are talking about the least squares method by Lily. And a few notes on disadvantages. Um, CD can be less than zero in some cases, which can correspond to some backscatter. Unfortunately, a CD can be less than zero for an extended period of time. And it's a bit difficult to... Uh, know what's going on in the subgrid scales uh, or rather like um, yeah, so anyway CD can be less than zero in some cases uh, this may reflect the backward cascade or backscattering um, and the thing is with CD being z less than zero for a long time it can result in numerical instability problems so like I said before um, they'll usually be coupled with some other models and one of these models is called the K equation model. So K equation model, uh, if you remember your K epsilon model, uh, K epsilon model uh, has two additional variables you solve throughout all, um, for all your grid, your whole grid. You have the turbulent kinetic energy and the dissipation rate of turbulent kinetic energy. So K omega model is something similar as well. But um, what the main point is that we, we can have this um, new SGS, uh, subgrid uh, viscosity, uh, based on turbulent kinetic energy as well. And what the equation looks like is as follows. You just uh, ignore this part first. I will just uh, cover this part up. Yep. So new SGS equals to some constant times some filter width okay times the square root of ksgs so if you look at cfd online you would have something like this over here where the dynamic viscosity uh, as put over here is equals to ck uh, ka sgs to the half and then some uh, filter width that's what it's modeled as over here right And sometimes you find the, well, in this in this particular case, you find it in mu t, which is the dynamic viscosity, but most of the time you find it, uh, find the expressions in mu. So this is uh, according to some textbooks where you have this uh, expression. So it's the ck into delta, uh, some uh, what do you call it, some uh, filter width, filter width, and the square root of kinetic energy. Then you will have uh, this. Okay, so there's a rather complex way of uh, de deriving this constant or this CK. Sometimes they'll just call this CD as well, depending on which paper you look. Uh, long and short story is that, uh, yeah, um, let's see. New. SGS equals CD delta bar square root K SGS. Yeah, and what what you find in some papers is that uh, according to Yoshizawa's model, uh, CD equals to zero point zero seven. Okay. Yoshizawa model. So this is the guy who. I think one of the first guys who did the first k equation and he found that this cd is 0 0.07 of course uh, you can use the dynamic smart gorinsky uh, the dynamic smart gorinsky model to kind of generate a dynamic uh, cd coefficient and that will be the dynamic k equation model but uh, we'll talk about basic k equation model before going to the dynamic bit so uh, what is what is the what is this uh, turbulent kinetic energy or subgrid scale kinetic energy? Well, sometimes they write it as Q square SGS. This is why you will often see it in literature. You'll see it something like this Q squared. So K SGS equals to Q squared SGS. Uh, let's get that out of the way first. And how how will the how will this uh, K be uh, defined? And again, depending on the literature, you might see different ways that you will write KSGS. So for example, I think in one of the large LES textbooks, 
you'll find this uh, expression of KSGS and this this is called the uh, large eddy scale large eddy simulation for incompressible flows you find this uh, equation for uh, KSGS over here on the CFD online website you will have something like this where instead of UK uh, we'll just use uh, U I yeah so it's U I squared minus U I bar squared so that's that's what we get now of course you want to see whether these uh, definitions are consistent so let's let's expand them out okay so u i equals to u i bar plus u i prime so that's uh, that's the same for both so we can expand the second equation all right just want to make sure see what what's similar and what's different so this whole thing will be squared and filtered so let's uh, let's put this in all right and so i'll have a square here all right Th this whole thing should be squared the ui prime will be squared as well and i'll take this out plus 2 ui bar ui prime and that's how you get uh, this expression expanded so the filter will of course uh, act individually upon each of them so okay this one will act here this one will act here alright the two of course we can leave outside the filter alright so once we do this we can take the filter on top out okay I'll take the filter out and this is what we are left with in the in this formulation of the equation then we can also expand the first one all right and what we'll get is ksgs is all right ui bar plus ui okay ui bar plus ui and yeah we just uh, now we see that this part actually cancels out very nicely and then you will just have ui prime squared so it's a slightly different way of writing uh, the thing but uh, let's yeah it's a bit different from uh, what you see here but let's see yeah is it the same or is it different so um, they're slightly different here because of the way you apply the filter so i'm going to have to see whether uh, i i can you know sort of expand this out and then we can get some form of uh, uh, ex sort of expanded equations to see whether this will cancel out with this all right we'll try to expand this ui bar squared all right into something more familiar hmm okay actually if you you try and expand this out using some uh, summation or something you will just uh, end up back at square one because that's that's the equation we used in the first place where u bar uh, u bar i square equals to u bar uh, u i minus u i prime square that's all we are doing substituting this back in here will just get us back at square one uh, back at square one where we have something like this okay so okay long and short of it uh, we find that this expression and this expression 
is not uh, exactly equal, right? All right, this, these two expressions are not equal. Well, uh, what what is the difference between them? Okay, so no matter how you you um, try and manipulate your terms, this expression of k s g s and this expression will be slightly different. But for simplicity's sake, okay, we can approximate these two to be equal using similarity. This is Bardina. This is Bardina's hypothesis of scale similarity. All right, so um, I'm not going to go into detail what this is. All right, I'm not going. Uh, I don't want to do that. Uh, that's that's another uh, big area of uh, math in LES modeling, and it requires a detailed look into the spectral uh, spectral look of uh, the spectral view of LES, which means to say we'll need to deal with equations that uh, deal with this uh, spectrum here where you have a distribution of kinetic energy versus the wave number where you do this Fourier transform Fourier, Fourier transform of the Navier-Stokes equation and you do all those things and you go into detailed analysis of those so for now I'm not, not going to do that I'll just say that okay We'll just use this working definition of KSGS and I will, I will say it's approximately equals to um, approximately equals to this. Okay. It'll be approximately equals to this. And I'll try to uh, get uh, get a way of deriving this uh, KSGS equations. So to derive the subgrid stress equations for this uh, velocity, to derive this transport equation, okay. So um, remember the reason why we are doing this is to help us solve for a varying uh, value of KSGS throughout your whole model, so that you can keep track of, uh, yeah. So that uh, let, let's draw a diagram. Let's find okay, yes, this diagram here. Okay, remember how how uh let's say from the medium eddies to the small eddies you can have a transfer of kinetic energy here. So you're looking you're looking at this part of the diagram. So we can have from the medium eddies to the small eddies a uh, transfer of kinetic energy. And if you keep transferring uh, kinetic energy to the small scales your CD uh, will go up all right but uh, if your CD is less than zero okay that means that uh, you are always transferring you're having this backscatter effect now problem with uh, using the dynamic uh, equation for this is that CD can go uh, very high into very high negative val values for very long, meaning to say that this backscatter will keep going on and on and on, even though perhaps in the real, like in the real model, in the real real world case, okay, there's not enough kinetic energy. So what am I talking about? Let's say this is the K, uh, subgrid scale kinetic energy of this eddies, all right? So if your CD is less than zero for very long, it means there's a lot of backscatter. So this model predicts backscatter, all right? But let's say you deplete your reserves completely of this uh, KSGS for a very long time. And then uh, even after that, you will still have this uh, CD becoming negative. That means your, your backscatter process is not very uh, realistic. So to help remedy that, uh, this KSGS model is uh, being put and it will also help with the numerical stability problem okay so anyway back to this we will we can start deriving one of those equations so remember our momentum equation so this is the this is the rough uh, 
this is the rough way to d derive a uh, k uh, the equation okay so we get the unfiltered equation of the k uh, of the momentum equation then we get the filtered equation then we subtract the filtered momentum equation from the unfiltered all right so i'm not going to yeah, I'm not going to redo too much of the math. I'll try to keep it short. But this this is the unfiltered equation. And I'll just get rid of this, this part. And uh, this is the filtered part of the equation. Where this these three are collectively known as the tau, tau ij r. And I'll just put this to the right hand side. Okay, I'll put this on the right hand side and um, yeah the idea is to get the unfiltered equation which is this then get the filtered equation then we subtract so um, we do subtraction so I will subtract the right hand the, the right hand side here I'll put it here, subtract this, I'll put it here. All right, so that's that's the first part. All right, so uh, let's try and combine some of the terms, okay? First is this, this minus this, which is a time derivative term. We notice that the derivatives are the same, so we can just combine both of them together. Okay, so I'll just put this here. Alright, I'll put this here. And ui minus ui bar. This is actually just equals to... ui prime. So that's that's for this time derivative term. And I can also combine these terms together. Uy uj minus this. I will just leave it inside. Of course I can actually uh, expand this out and then uh, we will get okay maybe just expand this out all right let's expand this out this will be u i bar plus u i uh, prime and this will be u j bar u j prime all right and that's uh, equals to uh, one here, two here, plus the cross terms, u i u j, plus u j u i prime. plus this thing squared ui uj prime squared or rather it's not a square but uh, just multiply them together so one thing you'll notice is that these two terms uh, drop out these two terms cancel so after expanding you will just get the following for the convection term or the advection term All right, so the left hand side will be as follows. So I'm gonna plus this. All right, and likewise, I can just do the same for the right hand side, the pressure term. Pressure term here plus this over here. 
equals to well I guess uh, minus one over rho okay this will be P prime so to speak okay so this 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 term is here this term I can just bring it out and I'll just leave it alone okay and now I will say the minus minus will become a plus so you have a minus out here a minus out here you just become a plus and we'll just leave this alone leave these terms alone and this term this term uh, minus this term right I will just have uh, this on the outside and the diffusion terms on the I mean the gradient terms on the inside will be as follows this one will be ui prime this one will be uj prime after we do the subtraction because uh, when we subtract the derivatives from each other given that the indices are the same we can just combine them and we see that ui minus ui bar is ui prime uj minus uj bar is uj prime uj prime so uh, that gives us that leaves us with the right hand side looking like this leaves us with this tau ij okay so we have a uh, we have an equation looking like this so and once we have this the have the unfiltered part of the Navier-Stokes equation next thing we can do okay this one should be a plus here plus okay next thing we can do is to multiply by u i prime all right so multiply throughout and we'll see it looks more and more like a turbulent kinetic energy equation because remember K SGS equals to half U I prime U I prime bar squared. All right. So U I. So this is the equation. This is the form of the equation we will use. Either way, it's fine. According to this uh, hypothesis of scale similarity, but uh, we can see that this one looks more and more at least dimensionally similar to the um, equation the KSG uh, subgrid scale kinetic energy equation so I'm gonna stop for now uh, thanks for watching I'll see you guys again bye bye